Hey everyone, NecroVMX here, and welcome to my fourth Comic-Thon feature, and my hopefully triumphant return to February movie review features. Yeah, it's it's been a while, hasn't it? Anyway, this year we're doing it slightly differently. While the feature will still feature 10 Marvel movie reviews, 10 DC movie reviews, and 10, 8 indie comic movie reviews, instead of separating them into sections like I had done previously, where I would do you know, the 10 Marvel movies all in a row, the 10 DC movies all in a row, and on all the rest after that. I decided to jumble them all up. I came up with the idea. I put it to a poll. You guys overwhelmingly voted to do it this way. So we're just going to do them in chronological order. And with that, what is a better spot to start than the first ever theatrically released feature-length movie based on a comic book, Superman and the Mole Men? Now, this film starred George Reeves as Superman, and it spun off into the wildly popular TV show The Adventures of Superman, which you might have seen. I've seen many episodes of it myself, but for whatever reason, until now, I've never sat and actually watched this movie. And it is not at all what I expected it to be. Now, what I expected, and what you might expect just based on the title alone, is a cheesily done story about mole men invading the Earth, and then Superman has to fight them off, you know. I'm happy to say that's not at all what this movie is. The basic story is that Clark Kent and Lois Lane arrive in this small town to do a story on oil drilling as a local oil drilling company has set the world record for the deepest oil well in the world. However, when the pair arrive, they find that the well is in the process of shutting down and there's signs of a bizarre cover-up as tools are being discarded and buried. Things get even more complicated when the night watchman turns up dead. Clark, in his investigation, uncovers that the drilling had bit through to a hollow core of the earth and the tools that pierced the area, as well as soil samples that they took from the area, are shown glowing, so they shut everything down, believing that it may be radioactive down there and therefore very dangerous. So, there are mole men, and they do indeed climb up out of the hole, but rather than being these malevolent invaders that you might expect, they're actually more like curious explorers that sheepishly poke their heads out into a new world. The possibly radioactive mole men accidentally cause death and injury simply because people see them and they get scared and then they have some sort of accident. For example, the Night Watchmen, they don't come right out and say it, but it's most likely the guy just had a heart attack when he saw these weird looking guys. And what strikes me really is that these mole men are really not all that weird looking. They basically look like just little people with bald heads and, you know, kind of ugly faces, but... Honestly, they're they're not that hideous, so it's kind of funny how everybody reacts to them. And, you know, you might think that that's kind of a knock on the movie, but it's really not, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. So Clark realizes that immediately that everybody's just scared of these things, and that's what's causing all these bad things to happen. And the townsfolk are very quick to start attacking the mole men. They try to kill them. They try to shoot at them. They want to hang them at one point. So Clark has to change into his Superman identity and protect the mole men from harm. So what I expected was a cheesy B-movie about invaders from the center of the Earth, and what I got instead was a Twilight Zone-style morality play about attacking people just for looking different. And that's why I got into how they really don't look all that weird or all that hideous, but these people are like, oh no, these things are different, kill, kill. So the mole men are pretty much harmless. The only source of danger being that they might be radioactive. But the crazed townsfolk, they form a lynch mob. Superman spends most of his time protecting the creatures, and then he's trying to help one who gets injured. So l let me get this out of the way. The special effects are about what you would expect from 1951. They're not great, and I'm not going to take any points off for that because this was obviously done on a pretty low budget, and it was 1951. But my biggest and really only issue is the Superman costume. It's not very good. It doesn't fit George Reeves very well. A lot of times I notice he's walking around and there's like wrinkles in his shirt. It it, it's not a good look. My only other gripe, which is a, really a minor one, and it's actually not really a gripe because I wish the movie was longer. It's only 58 minutes long, and as a matter of fact, it was once edited down to a two-part episode of the TV show, which I've also never seen. I mean, I've seen the TV show, but not the two-part episode that was based on this movie. But, you know, this could have been a 90-minute film. I think they could have fleshed out uh, some of the themes a little bit more. The acting is pretty good. The dialogue is actually surprisingly good. There were a few points where I actually laughed at this movie. Um, you don't get an awful lot of Superman, and, and you got to go into it knowing that. It's almost halfway through when Clark first turns into Superman. 
Uh, but as I pointed out, this is more of a morality play than a science fiction movie. I have to say, I did enjoy this quite a lot more than I had anticipated that I might. And I would recommend checking it out, especially for fans of the TV show that might never have seen it. I'm going to give Superman and the Mole Man an 8 out of 10. Uh, comic book movies tend to be of kind of random quality. And it's nice to know that they, they start off rather strongly. <laughs> 